Hey everyone, today we're tearing down the Xbox One X. Once we are inside of this thing, the plan is to put some thermal couples on it, do thermal testing, and just a teaser here, we have some new tools that will allow us to begin benchmarking console games. So you'll want to subscribe for that. But uh, this thing supposedly has a vapor chamber inside of it. It is quite a bit of mass in a, an otherwise small body. So the plan is to dismantle it, show you how that process works. And then we're gonna be looking at the thermal solution more closely along with the other components within. And if you are worried that the new Xbox One X would not have ventilation large enough for roaches to crawl into and die in. We just bought a used old one for parts and that's what was in there. Uh, good news, they can still do that. So if you buy one from a pawn shop like we did, keep that in mind. Before getting to that, this coverage is brought to you by EVGA and NVIDIA with the Destiny 2 1080 Ti bundle. The 1080 Ti SC2 comes with asynchronous fan control for its dual fans, nine thermal sensors, and again, includes Destiny 2. Learn more at the link in the description below. So the Xbox One X we just picked up, this is brand new, just to clarify, the one from a pawn shop is the previous Xbox One S, whatever it was, and we bought that so that we'll have the old cooler, the heat pipe plus aluminum finned usual heat sink. This one's got a vapor chamber heat sink. If we can swap them, we'll try it out just to see how effective it actually is, but that depends on the mounting spacing. Uh, so this thing, looking at it straight away, has two screws in the back. But if you don't know the specs already, from a PC hardware enthusiast perspective, it's basically got a more powerful RX Polaris chip in it. So this has 40 CUs, whereas for reference, an RX 580 has 36 CUs. Each CU has 64 cores. Uh, so with 40 versus 36, there's a decent power uplift in terms of performance. And in terms of other specs that are derived from that, it means that you end up with 2560 streaming processors versus 2304, 64 per CU. And assuming the same layout on this version of Polaris as on desktop, you would also be at 160 texture map units or TMUs as opposed to the previous count, which is you just multiply four by the CU count. And uh, that would also give us a texture fill rate of 275 gigatexels per second, as opposed to 193 gigatexels per second previously, which you can calculate because it's just the clock multiplied by the TMUs. And the Xbox One X has a clock of 1720 megahertz. So again, for perspective with the clock of 1720 megahertz, we're a couple hundred megahertz over RX 580 clocks, making it pretty interesting. And it's also, uh, got a faster, it has more memory bandwidth that 326 gigabytes per second as opposed to 256. And being in a console, it's gonna be hand-tuned for by the game developers. So it should be pretty difficult to beat uh, cost for cost with a PC these days, thanks to the DRAM prices and GPU prices and things like that. But let's take it apart, see what it looks like inside because that's what's gonna matter. So first off we have the, uh, fucked up screws and we're gonna need to find one of these which I think we actually do have this head I mean it'll work yeah this Torx 10 will definitely work but it's pretty rounded out head all right one I think there's probably one hidden in here so same screw type all right Okay, two screws out, anything else? Or is that it? Oh, I should note, uh, picking, oh, wow. Well, well, there's our next step. Picking this up at the store, the uh, attendant told me, oh, you got the Scorpio version. That has large letters on it, and in big letters it says Project Scorpio on it. <sighs> All right, so this slides forward. This is actually pretty Nice so far in terms of easy to manage design. There you go, it's got rails on it. So rails here, our two screws socket back there. Uh, ventilation ports, oh no, it's actually a facade over here. Uh, some ventilation here, none in the front, it's a facade. Oh no, it's real on the side. Okay, so you've got side ventilation and facade on the front and Underneath that, we have this. We used Torx 10 a second ago. Looks like about the same thing's gonna work here. Yes, it will. 
So I can already tell you that based on this pattern here, I'm thinking that's the vapor chamber. Let's start with the start with the uh, silver screws. Oh man, that's, that's that's enough to kill a vampire with. These this one does not. Okay. So these longer ones have a flattened out head. Uh, if you look at the ones near it, it's got the rounded uh, screw head. So that makes them easy to spot. So we're going to start with just removing all those with the flatter head and then see if the cage comes free. I'm thinking all the other parts are secured to that. Okay, so this is a very easy job apparently. This right here is what's securing us at this point. So I think we need a smaller head for that. Okay, TR9. Dip, no, no, that's right. Ribbon cable up here. So we're gonna disconnect that by pulling that out and pulling that down just like a laptop. And then this thing just comes out. Oh, that does actually connect to something as well. So what is that? And we don't know yet. This goes over to the uh, IR receiver. So there's your Remote, basically, infrared receiver. And then over here, what is this? Is this anything yet? OK, so what is this? Oh, USB. I should have looked at the side of the thing. <laughs> Looking at the front of the console would have revealed that. I'll just put that back in there. There's no real reason to remove it. OK, so internal housing, pretty easy. Uh, we can move that to the side. I don't really need that anymore. So this side we've now revealed. Not positive what comes out next at this point. We're going to start with the last of the flathead screws. Well, flathead as in it has a flat top. If anyone was wondering, this unit went through production on August uh, 30th, 2017. So that's how recently these were made, or at least that part was made anyway. Four, five. Oh, that's the hard drive I just loosened. Eight. Okay, yeah, hard drive's already loose. Next side. Okay, cool. It's very easy so far. So here's a shell, internal part of it anyway. Lots of ventilation and meshing, not really a big deal, all this stuff. Uh, I do need to know which way it goes back on though. And underneath, we have a fan that looks like a 120. Might be like a, a weird 112 or something, actually, which I believe, I think the original or the previous Xbox was a, a 112 millimeter fan, so it looks like around there. We'll find out. Blu-ray drive is connected by SATA, standard SATA. You can see it right there. And then next to that, we've got power. It's got a rubber, <laughs> rubber sheath on it for vibration damping. So power supply is right here. This is a 245 watt power supply, I believe. And that should just be a pull to release. Yep. There's our power supply power connector. 245 watts, 2.75 amps, and 1.3 amps elsewhere. That's about all you need to know about the battery. So that's... Got an insulated cable going down this side. 
This is all very methodical. I, I do have to give Microsoft credit. This is coming apart extremely easily. AMP, an AMP header. Uh, so yeah, there's our optical drive with the rubber thing on it. A model DG6M5S. If anyone needs a replacement, one of those in the future. It's a, a DG6M5S. And that connects via SATA to a SATA header on the board that's labeled optical disk drive SATA. The hard drive also connected via SATA. So this is a mobile drive. It's a one terabyte drive, retails for $65 on Newegg, 128 megabytes of cache. As for the speed, only 5,400 RPM on this one. Uh, data transfer rate up to 140 megabytes per second. So if you replace this with an SSD, you're gonna be in better shape, of course, but that's not a surprise to anyone. Got that, there's our drive. So let's just put that over here. They have actually secured it with uh, rubber damped hard drive screws. Let's get this monster cooler out. So here's the fan listed as thermal system, fan 01, AKA fan and a heat sink. So the fan and the heat sink assembly is uh, a blower fan. So that's a blower radial fan, not an axial fan. As for diameter, that might even be like a 100. So 100 to 120, I have to remove the fans really now, but, or not, not 120, 100 to 112. And all, I mean, it's just a, it's just a blower fan, just like you would have with a video card heat sink. It spins, the air just goes through this channel, and that is housing the uh, vapor chamber, which is just an aluminum heat sink with a copper cold plate that's got the liquid inside of it so that you get the phase change. So we can remove this and take a look at that, but it's, it's the same as every other vapor chamber we've ever looked at. Uh, what is this? This is your power from the wall. So that goes down in the corner over here. And power brick is right here. Uh, all of this is really modular, which is awesome because that means it's gonna be easy to replace stuff as a user without Microsoft's help. So they've numbered these. And I think it has to do with the disassembly process, which is also pretty cool. So if we take a look back here, it says fan 01 right there. And fan 01 is, it would have, I mean, it would have been the easiest to remove that first, is accompanied by power 02, if you can see that. And then the Blu-ray drive in front of me is labeled as disk 03. Uh, and the hard drive is labeled as hard drive 04. So seriously, big credit to Microsoft for building a console that doesn't completely suck to take apart. That's pretty uncommon. I mean, th labeling the stuff in the order it disassembles is great. It probably helps their RMA process, but it in indirectly helps consumers who are trying to maintain their own thing. So, uh, okay, let's look at what's next. Oh, hey, it's got the Scorpion on it. Is that a Master Chief? That's the Master Chief. Talk about an Easter egg. See that? Master Chief riding a scorpion. I don't think that was in the original teardowns that went on YouTube. This is uh... All right, so we've got a Master Chief in the corner and let's do the, let's get the vapor chamber off of here. It's got a pretty good cooling system on it. I mean, it's just, it's a giant version of a reference card. Uh, so I am tempted to play around with it and see what we can do, but for now, let's, what's got stock? These are smaller. Is there a good way to remove this? I feel like if you remove this, you could rip components off. I have to replace that thermal pad. Uh, there might be a screw on the opposing side. 
which if that's the case would kind of suck because then I'd have to take the whole board out. Now oh, there's got to be another screw in there. Okay, that goes like that. What is this anyway? Wireless, wireless. Okay, I already went through that. So that's wireless. This is, is this also wireless? Wi-Fi. Two different Mac addresses, two different wireless cards. Okay. All right. That thermal pad is syncing the bridge that one of the chipset into the body. So some sort of basic dissipation there. This is a flash module. So some onboard storage used for your probably firmware. I think it also acts as a cache. VRM components are on the other side for the most part though we have a few inductors around the outer edge. And then let's finally get this damn thing off somehow. Wow, looks like they bent those into place. Uh, right about ready to give up on this, just stuck one of these in here and kind of twisted it <laughs> like that. And lo and behold, it comes off super easily. So I thought this was going to be like sort of bent to shape to keep people out. But all you need to do is stick something in there to, to pop it up. All right, cool. Got a weird plug to provide resistance. And we should now be able to remove this. All of that pulling later. Okay, so a bunch of thermal pad, whatever's left of it, I'll replace that one. And still have the thermal pads on the VRAM. So what do we have? Three, six, eight. 12, so 12 gigabytes, one gigabit modules. They are Samsung modules. So 12 gigabytes of memory. And we have the APU here. Let's clean that off. Oh, that is some hardened paste. Taking some lessons from Intel on that one. It's like rubber. <sighs> Not sure that's really gonna do a lot for you. Unfortunately, we can't test thermals without removing this stuff because it doesn't have an internal sensor we can access. So we're gonna have to go the thermal couple route. If we do go that route, no promises yet. And that means we can't do a before and after. We can only do an after. But I mean, I can pull it off in plastic pieces. So, so if you ever need to replace the thermal paste on yours, this is where you'd be. Just be careful to not rip off any of the SMDs around the silicon on the outside. Don't use your fingernails too aggressively. This thing is four hours old or less. I mean, to be fair, that heat sink was date stamped as July. The internal chassis was stamped as August. So it's been made for a while, but so vapor chamber sits atop this. And there's your die or die cover anyway. Wow, it even says 4K in the bottom right, or left rather. Really, do we need 4K on there? What's Xbox One, 4K, and that is the APU. I'm pretty sure that's what we have here. I think what we have is a four phase VRM for the GPU uh, and a, maybe a single for the CPU, if not a dual, but it really looks like a single and here's why. They've done the work for us, they've labeled it graphics phase one, graphics phase three, graphics phase four, graphics phase two, CPU phase, no number. So yeah, I think that's what we have. We have five total phases. Uh, actually, no. Yeah, five total phases. One of which is for the CPU and four for the video card. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the teardown. A couple small things like a PC speaker on here. And then for the vapor chamber, I mean, it's it's a vapor chamber. It's what you always see. Copper plate in the bottom. 
and uh, aluminum fins on the top. And then it's got a separate aluminum plate contacting the VRM components, which sinks just into the fin stack. It doesn't actually sink into the vapor chamber part, the copper part in the bottom. So that covers it. That is the Xbox One X. It's not too hard to take apart. The only trick is, is popping the retention kit from the back of this off. But once you figure that out, that's pretty easy too. So that's it. We're going to rebuild it now. And I'm not sure about thermal testing. Not going to promise it yet, but we do have some game testing planned. That may take priority. So subscribe for more as always. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one or one of our GN stickers and patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.